Hey there, Dr. Von Duke here with another quick and duty, dirty uh, rubric short. So today I want to talk about rubric three, which is task one, question three C um, on your task one commentary. So what is the guiding question for rubric number three? Basically, it's asking you what evidence is guiding your instructional decision to uh, for the ways in which you support your students' strengths and needs to achieve for them to achieve that overall learning goal. So what evidence-based research strategy did you find that gives you the support or challenges that you can then uh, apply to your learner as they're attempting to meet that particular learning goal? Sort of a mouthful. All right, um, we'll talk more about how to find that information, but first of all, how does rubric three relate to other rubrics? Well, you're gonna use the information that you gathered in rubric two and restate your students' strengths and needs as you talk about how you're supporting it with an evidence-based practice. And then in rubric 15, you're going to need to make a connection from research or theory to move your student forward on the items that they should do next, uh, which would get you from a score of three to four. So if you think about this, this uh, work here in rubric three is a preliminary to that task three um, end rubric where you're going to be thinking about, okay, if it's a, if it's a need that your student has here and it was only partially achieved or they could go a little bit further, you'll probably draw on this research here um, for there. So what I'm trying to say is that your work here will uh, give you at least double duty. Just a quick note, I'm Dr. Von Duke. My purpose in um, supplying this free information to the public is I understand how ambiguous and difficult the TPA special education portfolio can be for you to do, especially in the midst of maybe you're busy final year in school or teaching, first teaching year. So I wanna share the most important strategies to get you through each of these rubrics. And I, I sort of take the core idea. If you wanna walk through on how to do it at the end, or at the bottom of this video, you can find the link tree to my other support services. So let me break down the score as the reviewers will see it so that you can know what the, with the end in mind where you're going with this. So um, obviously if you have a deficit view of your student, that's a one, it's funny how you don't get a zero, but so anything that you put down is going to give you a one. Um, if you have a general justification for why you uh, picked particular support um, for students' needs or a particular way to challenge them for their strengths, um, and you sort of have a loose justification there between your support and your learner's strengths or needs, that will get you a two or, so you don't have to have both of these, or if you have a very vague um, connection to research and the support that you chose. In order to get a three, and this is always a qualitative leap from a two, just like a two is a big leap from a one, which is essentially nothing. So two is you almost put anything down you know, somewhat related, remotely related to the thing that they're asking you to talk about in a very vague way. But a three, now we're starting to get, we want a very general understanding of each part of the question that they're asking you. So it's more gen, it's still general, it's not vague, it's general, but there's now several components that you need to add together. So here, they want to know um, why you chose the support that you did to meet the strength and the need and, how is that connected to research or theory? So here's how I challenge my student who had this strength. I use this evidence-based research technique. And here's how I supported my student with this academic need towards this learning goal. And here is the evidence-based research link for that. So both of those things have to be in place. You may not express it quite as explicitly and specifically as they would want. So um, then you, the next for a level four, that is a qualitative difference further from the three. Now we want very specific. So your evidence-based research should basically tie specifically what your student's need is to the specific learning outcome that you um, are trying to help them achieve what your student's challenge or, or um, strength is, what their need is, specifically to the outcome that you're trying to get them to achieve. So a clear justification of the student's strengths and needs, that's gonna be based on your baseline. So you're gonna justify they have that strength. You're going to justify they have that need. Whereas before you're just sort of generally stating it, now you're proving it. Um, and then you're gonna have your support that is designed to meet that strength or need. And that support will have a specific and clear connection to research and theory. And that's going to, you're going to explain also how your focus learner is going to um, 
understand or better demonstrate the learning objective because of your support. So um, how your supports connect the learner to achieving the learning objectives uh, via connected research supported is how you get from a three to a four year specific, but you also explain that how that support connects. And then a five is uh, for task one, I do recommend that you try to get a five um, because this is the easiest place where you have the most control and you can bank points um, at your, so even if you failed a task two, but you had enough points on your overall portfolio, I don't think there's a minimum, I've never seen one. So you could in effect pass your whole portfolio, even if you had a really awful task two, which kind of doesn't make sense, but I think it breaks down that way. So um, that is a good thing to, um, to bring up in a later um, video. So, so you wanna bank points just in case, or especially if you know that maybe some of the other areas of your portfolio are weaker. And again, you have the most control here. So the justifying strategies for generalized, maintained and self-directed use um, has to also be connected to that research. Um, the learning goal, let me repeat this. Um, so you're gonna generalize this particular uh, skill, right, to some other concrete area. So look back at rubric one suggestions for that or in my course. And then um, you're going to justify that strategy based on research, though it's not explicitly stated. So getting a five is always going to be a challenge. Remember, every level up is a qualitative difference. So getting to that five, is it's not going to be enough to have your um, what you're doing, what your strategies are going to be for that. When this question clearly is asking about research, you need to make that connection as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how to get that research. Remember that we're going to connect the need uh, with support, with the learning objective, with your evidence-based research, a student strength, with how you're scaffolding. And by scaffolding, I mean that you're um, pushing them beyond where they can go. Um, to the learning objective and to evidence-based research. So my suggestion is go to scholar.google, put in the, um, an evidence-based practice, just put that phrase in, put in the lesson topic or the, your lesson objective goal. If there's a specific need of your student um, that you would want to modify for how you're, remember, this is still an academic goal, even though uh, the special education portfolio was all about special education. It's really built off the elementary special um, at TPA. So they added in special education language in there, but really the orientation is the same. They're looking for academics. Um, so, but you can put in the grade level, you can put in um, a particular need that your student has. And if it's in the IEP that the lesson should be modified in that specific way, you definitely wanna add that in. That is the one place where it makes a difference. And then, you know, you might put in the specific need or strength. Now, sometimes if you put all that in there, it's going to narrow that search too much and you're not going to get up anything in there. So you can sort of drop components off till you get back to the place where you're getting a good return for your search. All right. So um, this is like slowly coming down and making me go away. Um, so an example would be evidence-based practices, subtraction with regrouping, ADHD, manipulatives, right? And then you can use quotes around it if you want the exact order and words returned. But again, this will limit your returns. So you can try with and without. Um, another thing you can do is you can get a um, short, um, a short-term trial membership to Goldbook app. That that um, particular site is amazing in providing differentiated lessons and um, really everything detailing down to where you want. So remember that the. Um, even though the EdTPA is written in a linear process, it's iterative for you. So if your lesson plan does not include uh, one of these wonderful um, evidence-based practices that they're asking for here, who knows if you went back and looked at it later and added it back in, right? So if you don't have it in, go write it in. All right, um, which is basically what I'm saying here. Like, oh no, what if you didn't find research prior to your teaching or even, even after you started filming? Um, what if you already filmed and now you're now you're you've done your you wrote your lessons you filmed it you assessed it and now you're going back and doing all the commentaries. <gasps> what do you do? What if you weren't clear on their strengths and needs until now? Okay, 
Um, nobody knows you didn't plan ahead. So take all that information you got when you filmed and gave the student assessments and throw it back into your lesson plans. Even So the thing is, even if your um, filming doesn't show, if you added these things back in your lesson plan and your film doesn't show it, it doesn't matter. Like they're looking for specific things in your film. It's the NTP is not a documentation of precisely what you did in the way that you did it. So you can take advantage of that and do things iteratively. All right, my additional services are there. Um, I hope you found this helpful and I will see you around at the next one.